Good morning, it is filled to the brim and it is Tuesday, October 20th and I wanna give two shout outs today. One is to my five year old granddaughter. Today is her birthday, so happy birthday, Penny. And to Sarah and Moses Rayo. They just got married this morning and my husband and I were up very early, 4.30 a.m. to watch their wedding on YouTube Live. So we bless that marriage and who Jesus has put together, let no people around them try to tear them apart. Their marriage is blessed and they are one. So God bless you. Today, the Holy Spirit is talking to us about cultivating fruitfulness and he is saying this, are you hungry? It's really important for us to sustain spiritual hunger over the journey of our lives, not just when we're new in the Lord, but to sustain that spiritual hunger. Because if we start feeding ourselves on the world or giving in to our flesh, we can become very dull of heart, dull of spiritual appetite. And many times this is the way that we leave the path of being fruitful and we end up being like the world. We end up compromising. We end up taking on sin that Jesus has freed us from. Many times people return to things that they had left because they have become dull of heart. They have become uh, with a lack of a spiritual appetite for the things of the Lord. And actually this happened in scripture. One of the prophets, the minor prophets named Amos addresses this with the people, God's people, because because what has happened is they have become impure. They have become like the other nations around them that don't know the true and living God. And God is going to discipline them. And that's what Amos tells the people. God is going to discipline you and you're, you will go into captivity as a result. And there will be destruction over the temple. Because you have grown dull of heart. Because you have become impure. Because you have served other gods. Amos 9 verse 11 says this. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will send hunger over the land. Not hunger for bread or a thirst for water, but rather a hunger for hearing the word of the Lord. People shall stagger from sea to sea and from the north, even to the east. They will roam here and there to seek the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. See, the fact is this, what happened is the Lord, the Lord is saying, I'm going to withdraw my word and you're going to desire me once again, because no longer will you be hearing the prophet speak. You're going to have, a, you're going to be on your own for a while because you have dismissed and you have been re a rebellious people. So this is what Amos is telling the people that God has expected you to be pure, pure. God has expected you to be different. You are God's people and yet you have chosen rebellion and therefore become dull of heart, hungered after the world rather than hungering after the word of God, which was what Moses had written called the Pentateuch, the five first books that they called the, the books of the law. And so this is what the prophetic word says, but it tells us something about how hunger and keeping a pure heart and a, and a pure life before the Lord go hand in hand. Because when we are filling ourselves with the things of the world, we lose our hunger for righteousness. We lose our hunger for the word of God. When we are filling ourselves with our flesh, giving into our flesh, letting our flesh rule and reign, letting our mind and our thoughts be fleshly, uh, putting our time and energy and being like the world, you will lose your hunger for the things of God. It will grow dull. You will not desire the things of God. You won't desire being around the people of God. You won't desire listening to the word of the Lord. That's why purity is so important. You know, Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. What is righteousness? That is desiring to be pure, hungering to be pure, for they shall be filled. Jesus is emphasizing the hunger for righteousness. You know, in the Old Testament, the psalmist writes, Psalms 107, 9, that the Lord satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. He fills us with good things when we are hungry, when we hunger and thirst after his righteousness. His righteousness brings good things to our lives. We are in agreement with him. We're not in rebellion. We're not impure. We're not living lives of sin. We're not having a dull heart, but rather we have an appetite for his ways and his presence and his word. We want his word. 
you know what G, what the Lord did to Israel when they were in Egypt he brought them out from Egypt and he taught them to hunger after him taught them that they should be hungry for what he has and how did he do that well he removed those things that they were feasting upon by taking them out of Egypt by out of the land of polytheism they had to be purified and this is what Deuteronomy 8 3 says this he, the Lord, humbled you and let you be hungry and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. The Lord was taking them out of the worldliness of Egypt and said, I'm going to teach you to hunger after the word of the Lord. I'm going to teach you to hunger after my ways. How does God do that? He, t he removes those things in our lives that are feeding our flesh, feeding sin and causing us to have a dull heart or not hungering after his ways, his presence, who he is. You know, Jesus quoted this very scripture of Deuteronomy when the enemy was trying to tempt him in the, during the temptations in Luke chapter 4. Jesus said man does not live by bread alone. Jesus was causing the his physical self, his body to be in submission to the the spirit. And he said, "Listen, I'm not going to hunger after what the enemy can give me. I will not hunger after what the world will give me. I'm not even going to hunger after what my flesh wants. I'm going to hunger after the word of God. I'm going to live my life in agreement with the Father." And you know what? Jesus even said this again when after he ministered to the Samaritan woman and the disciples came and said, Hey, they had just gone into the, the, the nearby town and brought back food. That's why he was alone with the Samaritan woman at the well, because they had gone out to the town and they come to say, aren't you hungry? Aren't you hungry? And you know what Jesus says to him? My food is to do the will of the father. See, he was constantly hungry, desirous of the Father's presence in his life. That agreement. You know, that's how we sustain hunger in our lives. Let us be hungry for the presence of God. Let us be hungry for the Word of God. But how does that happen? Well, we can't let ourselves feast on the world. Feast on our own flesh. And you know what sometimes the Lord has to do? He has to remove things out of our life. He has to cause us to be hungry again. Let Him do that. Let Him cause you to be hungry. Hey, if you've dabbled in Egypt, if you've dabbled in other things, let him remove those things so that you reignite that hunger, hunger to serve him and to love him and to love his word. Think about this word. God bless you and I love you.